uh, my question is uh, what uh, if you look at the 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 current state of of clinical trials in the world what excites you the most two things excite me so so one is a structural thing and that is that as a community the als trials community internationally is doing clinical trials in a different way that is better so we have at least three initiatives to do this one is the healy platform trial run out of massachusetts general hospital so that a platform trial is a way to study many drugs at the same time in parallel that's a nice powerful system they're doing phase two studies so phase two studies are ones where we really look to see is there any signal this might be worth taking to the next stage and is it safe to take and they can answer that in many many different drugs simultaneously that's a very good um, advance a second example is the mnd smart study that's come out of edinburgh so that's another platform study that's using only liquid formulations so anyone can take it and the nice thing is that even people who can't swallow very easily most trials would not allow you into the study with the mnd smart you can because it's a liquid formulation and the third one is called tricals which is uh, the treatment research initiative to initiative to cure als and that's run through europe it's a european study but actually we have members from canada and australia joining as well and that uses five approaches to doing trials better one is to do a trial system a bit like a platform trial where we look at multiple drugs at the same time but the other four arms one is to see how can we classify patients better so that we target the treatment only at the subgroup that needs it another is to ask are there biomarkers or some other blood test or urine test or something we could look at that would mean we can measure if the drug is working quicker so that we can do the study quicker another is to ask are there outcomes that are be better that we should be measuring so instead of just looking at survival or the als frs is there a better question we could ask a better thing to measure that means we could do the study more accurately more quickly and the final thing is electronics are there ways we can combine our study design so that we can always we can share our data with the Healy platform and with the MND smart team because we're all using the same system is that one thing we can do is there a way to do that and also are there electronic things we can do to enhance patient care for example um, from Sheffield there's a system called Tim where patients are given an app and they can report on the app how they're feeling that automatically goes back to their care team at King's we've had a system called call me where an app tells us if the patient goes into the ER, if they go to the emergency room unexpectedly, and then we can ring the ER and say, don't give this patient oxygen unless you've done this, that, and the other, and et cetera. We can make sure they get the best care. So are there ways that we can intervene electronically? That's the, that's the other arm. So, so to me, that's one big group of things that is really important. We're doing trials better, faster, and bigger than ever before. The second thing that's very exciting, which I think basically was the subject of your last interview with Tim Miller is gene therapy. I think that's a really exciting area. At the moment, about 14 to 15% of people have a gene involved, even if they don't have a family history. And so if we can make gene therapies work, then that's a very exciting thing, because that would mean two things. One is we could potentially, if they do work, stop the disease in 14 to 15% of people. That's an amazing result for any neurodegenerative disease. And the second thing would be that pharmaceutical companies would understand ALS is curable or stoppable and therefore it's worth investing in. And the reason it's worth investing in is the lifetime risk of ALS is one in 300. So it's quite a common disease, it's not uncommon. And if you have one in 300 people whose disease has stopped, then for a pharmaceutical company, that's a big market. It's worth investing just for that reason. And so I think gene therapy if it shows us the way that will be a really nice powerful result for everybody not just for people with a gene that has uh, found a way to be treated <laughs>